to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger S. Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Ion Connect. The state-of-the-art co-working space and tech lab helps grow innovative ideas to commercialization and market launch. Our speaker this evening is Orit SLN. Orit is a full-time creative and YouTuber with a passion for helping entrepreneurs grow their business and establish a solid online presence. Orit is also a digital designer and a performing artist. Vancouver Business Network and most welcome guests, I invite you now to put your hands together and give Orit Esselen a warm VBN welcome. Thank you very much, Roger. Thank you. And thank you for the warm welcome, everybody. Um, all right, so I have two goals for you today. Two things. Number one is to demonstrate the power of what YouTube can do for you and your business. And the second thing is we'll get into those specific strategies, which is what you came here for. But I don't feel that those specific strategies would be would be worth its weight if I didn't actually describe the significance of what they can do for you by putting them into action. I want you to come out of this presentation with some concrete action steps. I want you to go home and either be inspired to start up your, your YouTube channel or to say, okay, I'm going to set time for filming one video every two weeks even, just some sort of concrete goal to get you going. So, this picture that you see up on the screen here is a screenshot of our YouTube channel. It's called Esatino Artists. And not very many people know how to spell that or get confused when they hear it. So we decided to purchase a domain um, with IamDreamDriven.com. So if you go straight to IamDreamDriven.com, it'll take you directly to the YouTube channel. And that's really our tagline, is dare to be dream driven, right? Um, we, we are full-time creative entrepreneurs and YouTubers, but we had no idea that this is where life would take us, if you asked us back in school. Um, I, have, I run this business and the channel with my business partner, Jewel Palantino, and we were on completely different tracks before. So I was actually on the path to becoming a doctor. Um, I was taking science courses and pre-med pre requisites to get into med school. And I was, you know, I, all, I knew, all I knew was school and studying. I came from a very academic background and the approved careers of choice were lawyer, engineer, and doctor. So that's what I ended up going, you know, following that kind of path. And then I realized that it's, you know, you go to school for a certain number of years to prepare for this thing called life. And you should feel excited for that life that you are preparing for. But I didn't feel that. I didn't feel that at all. I was actually quite terrified, to be honest. Um, and what I really loved doing is more of the creative side of things. I loved being around other creative entrepreneurs. And particularly music was a big calling, is still a big calling to me today. So, you know, this whole channel that we created is about helping other creative entrepreneurs do what they love for a living, grow their business online and make more money and just be happy and have fun. That's what life is about is to have fun. So that is kind of where YouTube has taken me because I, I had to start a channel to really put myself out there. Nobody knew that I could sing um, or that I even wanted to because the thought of even sharing that with someone terrified me at the time. And I, you know, I, I decided to do that because of two, actually two main milestones. One was, by the way, Jewel's life in parallel. She was uh, on the way to becoming a Filipino nurse, the stereotype upholds, because all Filipinos do something in the care aid hospital, you know, taking care industry. <laughs> so she was kind of having this life in parallel with me as well. Um, and so we were both kind of unsettled with what was going on. And she discovered the book, The Secret. How many people here have heard of the book, The Secret? Okay, most of this room. 
So Jill doesn't really like to read much back then. She reads now, she listens to audiobooks more now. But she was very attracted to this book because it looked all medieval and it had this like really classy melted wax stamp on it and it was just very calling to her. So that's the only reason that she picked it up. She had no idea what it was about. And after she read that, she told me to read it. It was like shades were lifted off of her face because she, for the whole time, we had really realized that we were living the scripted life. It was very much according to a script. And it was, it was, we always felt like things were happening to us. So the world was happening to us. But after we read that book, we realized that we had that power to control everything that's happening outside of us. We have the power to create our own script and to design that life that we want. After she read that book, she decided that she wanted to become an entrepreneur. And um, I had no, like for me, I had no interest in business whatsoever. Um, but the second thing that happened was a coworker had invited me to a business networking event quite like this one. And like I said, I had no interest in it whatsoever, but I knew Jewel had put it out there that she was interested in business. So I said, okay, there's this thing, like my coworker invited me to this thing, let's go to this business networking group. Um, and we did. And from that, we were, we were introduced into so many different influences, new ideas, um, you know, this whole world of being your own boss and, you know, designing your own day to day and doing what you love. So that's really what started everything. And I said, okay, I'm going to pursue my, my career in music. And we had to learn how to do all of this ourselves, how to market online, how to, um, how to start a YouTube channel. That was the main thing, was creating video and putting it out there. And it really allowed me to practice more of my craft and get better at it, as well as sharing it with other people. So I was actually, you know, I released my first album. I went on tour, on a national tour across Canada, from Victoria to Halifax. We did 12 cities in 14 days. It was just all a dream come true. And I, and from that, you know, a new opportunities start to come out because people were seeing what we were creating in terms of video online and putting that out there. And um, the, the label that I, was, that I was working with at the time said, you guys are doing some great marketing work. Um, we want to bring you on as the social media experts on our label to do this for other artists on the roster. So it can create new opportunities like that, new kinds of opportunities for business, for money, um, for practicing your craft. And it also establishes a certain sense of credibility, right? Because you're constantly putting yourself out there, talking on your topic, um, and it, it allows you to really um, set yourself up to collaborate with other people and other influencers as well. Um, this is how we managed to, um, talk, to connect with people like Danielle Laporte. How many people have heard of Danielle Laporte? Um, she's an influencer in the personal development space, um, also very much in the creative space as well, um, wrote a book called The Desire Map, which I, I read and really admired. Um, so lots of cool things come out of that. It also, to a certain degree, has made our business passive. To, not our entire business is passive, but in a certain sense, it has created passive income for us, but also in the way that it's set up is that it it's a system, it's a marketing system that feeds into the rest of our business. So this allows us to travel more, to take more vacations. Um, and to actually in October, um, this past October, we went on a three week trip to Israel, Berlin, London, Amsterdam, just, just enjoying life and also sharing that with other people as well. Because, um, you know, we want to also, our channel is a tutorial based channel. So we teach people how to do a lot of different things, but we also like to share our personal adventures and our, that kind of side so people connect with us. And that's really what video allows you to do is it allows people to connect with each other on a different, on a different level than a picture or words will. Um, this was actually one really cool thing that I wanna share with you before we look at numbers and analytics um, is, remember how I said Jewel really loved the book, The Secret? Um, she actually created a video on our channel explaining her experience and how this book completely changed her life. And um, Rhonda Byrne, the author of The Secret, 
her team saw this video and sent it to Rhonda. And Rhonda loved it so much that she actually ended up sending uh, Jewel her book, her next book, How the Secret Changed My Life. Jewel, actually, she loved that so much. She had no idea. She was like, oh, cool. Rhonda's sending me her next book because she saw this video. Excellent. Good promo stuff, right? Um, but when she opened it, she saw this personal note that Rhonda had written and she was completely like, it, it's emotional when, you know, someone who has completely changed your life writes, talks to you specifically to you directly on that level. It's, it created such a big impact. Um, so unexpected opportunities like this that you would never really think of or can't even fathom can come into your life. And to summarize everything, it's really the more you put yourself out there on video, I know it's scary. I know it's a time consuming project and it's very, you're being vulnerable. Um, but from you doing that, you're attracting people into your world. You're attracting opportunities into your life. You're creating change. You're practicing your passion, your dream. And that can go so many different ways for you. So that's kind of, the power of YouTube. Um, there's many different things that I don't, I don't have time for, but that's kind of a little taste of that. We started our YouTube channel in 2011, and um, but we didn't actually focus on growing it until 2015. So that was kind of like our beginning year for YouTube is 2015. That was when, you know, social media all came out, all these different platforms, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and we wanted to be on everything. Everyone told you to be on all those platforms at once in order to make an impact. But really, we didn't make, we, we found that we weren't making any impact on any of them because we were spreading ourselves too thin, trying to post here and there, throwing up a video once in a while. Um, and this, this, um, these words were passed along to, to me by one of my mentors is um, simplify to amplify. So take a look at what's working for you and really focus in on that. What is creating the most impact in your business? And we found even though we were throwing up a video here and there on YouTube, it had, it had created more of an impact than the, the quantity, like we put way more posts out on Facebook and Twitter. But this over here, these videos, we were receiving comments from people saying, thank you so much. It's exactly what I was looking for. You helped me. Um, you know, we, we, we felt more of that impact through video. So we were like, okay, we need to kind of, let's see, let's see what happens here. We, we should amp this up. So we started to release more than one video um, or more. We started to release one video a week, um, more than one every, once every random time. Right. And, um, and then about mid 2015, we received a call or we received an email from YouTube and they were saying, hey, we noticed that you guys are putting effort into growing this and we wanna offer you a three call mentorship um, for 30 minutes each call, would you be interested? And at first we were like, this is a scam. We did not believe it. Do I remember Jewel Googling like the person's name and everything to see if it was real? Um, and it was, and it was, it was really um, kind of like the foundation for what would, would start in terms of what we would end up doing in the following years on our YouTube channel. The main takeaway, um, and I'm going to share with you what was taught to me. The main <coughs> takeaway is that, yes, you do have to be consistent in your uploading as well as your audience needs to know that you're coming out with a video on this day of the week and this time. So communicate that to them. If you can do one video a week or one every two weeks, communicate that to them. Tell them I'm gonna come out with a video on this topic every Wednesday at 9 a.m. And let them, let them know. You have to create that kind of <coughs> publishing schedule just like you know when you you loved, your, you loved a TV show and you knew that the next episode would come out on Wednesdays because you would expect it. That keeps you engaged with the content. So that was the main thing is set an actual, be consistent with the day and time that you release the video. And um, a bunch of other things were shared as well, which we will talk about. But just to show you before we implemented these strategies, this right here is a graph 
of, or as a snapshot of one year, that's the year of 2015, and our growth in that year, or lack thereof. Um, so we, in that year, had accumulated 160,000 views on our channel. So it's not total, right? It's just in that year. We had accumulated over 7,000 watch time hours. Um, we had accumulated 533 subscribers. We gained 533 subscribers in that year. And we had an ad revenue of about $500 US, which is around $658 Canadian. So YouTube will always show you um, those figures in US dollars. So that's just ad revenue. That's just the kind of, that's the, the, the revenue that comes in from when you, um, you monetize your channel and you have like ads playing in the beginning or in the middle or at the end and someone watches it or clicks on it, then you get cents, you get a piece of that, right? Um, and so that's the channel made 500, about 500 US in that year. Now, after we implemented these strategies, this is a snapshot of our channel analytics just before I came here tonight, um, or a few days before. So we've, we've gained 1.4 million views in the past year, in the past 365 days, um, 74, over 74,000 watch hours, um, eight, over 8,000 subscribers, 8,300 uh, 8, subscribers gained in this year, in the past 365 days, and around $14,800 Canadian in ad revenue. So to us, ad revenue is kind of like a bonus of what we are doing um, because we kind of, that's how our, our business is structured. But to some people who start a channel, this can be like this can be a, a full-time annual income. Um, you can make a lot more. It's just, again, dependent on the type of content you have and, um, and your audience as well. So what did we do differently to grow our channel? So the first thing, uh, which I've hammered in a few times already, and I know this is what a lot of people struggle with. This is what is preventing a lot of people from even coming on the platform or doing it consistently is the fact that they have to do it consistently. Um, you can't look at it as, uh, as a challenge, like um, you can't look at it as something that's going to prevent you from doing it or as a challenge or a time bomb or something like that. Um, you have to look at it as an opportunity for growth, as a challenge to yourself and investment in your business. Yes, it does take time, but the more you do it, it won't take that much time. You'll, you'll get better at it. You'll practice more and you'll get better at it. And what we found has really helped us in terms of that time saving, how to keep up with producing videos is, um, is batching our production. So that means whatever, how many ever videos you commit to um, in a month, if it's one video a week, let's say, so that's four videos a month, Film them all at once. Take one day to film four videos. Then the next day, edit those videos. And then you can either uh, upload them all on that same day or do it the next day. So batch your production. And that's what's really going to help you set yourself up for success and stay on top of things. Because it's just so stressful to think about releasing a video tomorrow. You know you have to do that. You have to film. You have to edit. It's hard to keep up with it. And no wonder. Like it's... Um, it's hard to stay consistent when you do it that way. So batch your production. So first question you have to ask yourself is how many videos can I release on my channel realistically and be honest with yourself. Even if it's one every two weeks or even if it's one every three <coughs> weeks, just get started with one every X number of weeks or one a month or whatever it is. Be real with yourself and commit to that and stick with it. And then from there, you can start to add, you can add more videos. The, the, the more you get the hang of filming and editing and, and uh, putting it up online, it's gonna become easier for you, it will. Um, and if you find that you don't like it too, of course, make sure you know, outsource what you don't like and come to the next talk for David so next week, because he'll definitely help you out with that. Um, another thing that you can do is, having a theme for each day. So if you are releasing more than one video a week, let's just say it's two, then find a way to kind of look at your business and say, or look at your channel and say, what 
categories or themes can I create for Monday? Um, and what theme can I set for Wednesday? So that it will be easier for you to come up with those ideas. If you know you have to come up with an idea for, let's just say, um, mindset stuff, or if you wanna come up with a theme for a day for video editing, it, it'll be so much easier for you to come up with those video ideas if you set those themes to the days. And then, and then again, batch your production. So film all of your videos at once, edit them all at once and release it. That's really gonna help you set yourself up for success. I'll take questions at the end, is that okay? Um, just to get through all of this content. So for us, we release about four to five videos a week on our channel. And there is no way we would be able to do that if we don't use these tips that I'm sharing with you, batching our production. Um, we have different themes for our days as well, which I can talk about later, but I wanna get to the next slide here. Number two is focusing on high quality content. So I put that consistency as number one because I don't want you to get stuck on, oh, it has to be the best production ever with HD quality and like, it has to be the best because that's going to just cause procrastination. It's gonna overwhelm you. You're not gonna to wanna to do it. Um, unless you're a video guy, but it's really like, this is number two. So after you've gotten the hang of producing consistently, then you can focus on producing high quality content. And I'm talking not about the production, but the content. So really giving a ton of free value in our videos. Um, that's something that we do. We our, our channel is kind of, um, it's structured in a way that produces evergreen tutorials and evergreen means that this video has a long shelf life. People will continue to watch it over and over again because it's, it's something that teaches you how to, how to throw a banner up on YouTube or how to get more subscribers. It's something that someone can watch over and over again, right? We still have videos on our channel from 2016 that are still producing ad revenue for us. So that's evergreen kind of content. You can try throwing up um, something that's like trending, like talking about the trends um, or going after the viral video market, right? But understand that that has a shorter lifespan. Um, some, you know, if you're a vlogger and you produce, you, you throw out a vlog episode, someone typically will watch it once, typically, um, and then expect you to come out with the next episode. So, you can structure your channel in different ways. Um, there's different types of contents that you, that you can come up with. Um, our channel, the way that we structured it is that it's, it's really um, showcasing our brand and the whole dream driven thing, doing what you love. So under that whole umbrella is marketing tutorials, making money online, um, personal stories, things that have inspired us, all that kind of stuff. Um, so keep in mind that you, don't want to um, you don't want to box yourself in too much by ch by starting a channel on one specific topic um, because unless you want to um, those kinds of channels also perform very differently than ours but these are the types of things that you kind of need to take into account and high quality content also means being authentic I know this is kind of like cliche be yourself but we've seen so many channels that get started and they like they they feel like they need to be this other person so they tend to up their charisma and everything um, and then they you know that channel dies out they're they're following just kind of like they don't feel like that's congruent with who they are so then that kind of stops you you are going to have other channels doing what you do you are not um, a silo in your industry other people are gonna be creating content like you. However, whatever's, what's gonna make you stand out is your personality. So don't try to be like your competitor, um, is my advice to you. These are some channels that we have um, coached one-on-one -on -one and mentored. Um, this is a product channel, just to give you an example. They release uh, product reviews. So he's very entertaining and like promotional as well, right? He's promoting different products. Um, this is Kevin Bersiaga. He uh, helps he helps people with um, eating disorders, particularly he has like a binging, purging eating disorder. So he talks a lot about that, his personal story, um, that kind of thing. 
This is another channel that we um, have mentored recently, starting a channel on all things disaster. So talking about how to, how to overcome natural disasters. Like you can start a channel on anything you want, anything, and you will have an audience for it. Um, so I want to I want to put that out there because don't feel like you you know you're not sure whether people will come into your world and watch it because there's other people doing that that kind of stuff out there. It's not true. You're going to stand out in your own way. Um, so the third thing uh, is how, understanding how to rank your videos. Um, those first two things, high quality content and consistent and frequent uh, frequency of videos is the foundation. So if you don't take anything else out of this presentation except those two things to succeed on YouTube, that, that is number one and number two. Everything else is now what you can improve on to grow that channel even further. So most of our traffic that comes into our YouTube channel is all organic. And that means that when someone types in something into the search engine um, onto Google or, or on YouTube, our videos will pop up on the first page. And this is because we really understood how to rank our videos, how to optimize our videos. Um, part of this process is, you know, watching the video in front of you, the video that you just produced, and asking yourself, what would someone type into the search engine to come across this video? And you need to do research on that, those keywords or that, that question or whatever it is that you type into that, that, into that um, search engine. So you're going to research how much demand is there for that? Are people actually searching for that? As well as how many videos are already out there on that topic? And before we used Google Keyword Planner, meaning like we had to like look at all these numbers to determine whether there's demand for it, competition, but now there's, uh, really a lot of amazing tools out there. We use TubeBuddy, which is a Chrome extension that you can just add on to your browser. And TubeBuddy does a lot of other cool things uh, for your channel, basically like a supercharger for your channel. They help you with creating thumbnails and giving you stats and responding to comments, automating a bunch of processes. But the one thing that I love using is their keyword explorer because you can do your, your keyword research really easily. You type that phrase in, you hit explore, and boom, it gives you a score right away, letting you know whether that specific phrase is good for your channel to, to uh, rank for. Because it's different. If you just do a general optimization search of how good this phrase is, it might not be specific to your channel um, because every channel is different. You might be a new channel just starting out. You might be a channel that's producing five videos a week. Everybody is at a different level in terms of SEO juice on their channel. So this um, tells you right away whether you can, your specific channel can rank for that keyword phrase. So I use this tool all the time. Um, and we're actually in the process of releasing a course on SEO, YouTube SEO with TubeBuddy. So that's, that's coming out later this year. Um, but it, there's a whole process with that. But just taking a step, again, to learn a new skill and to bring more people into your channel. Again, don't get overwhelmed by all of this. It's all like one thing at a time. Focus on one thing at a time. The next thing that was really helpful in terms of uplifting our channel is creating more activity on the channel by being responsive. So responding to every single comment that we get on the channel was really important, especially when we first started out. Now we get hundreds of comments, so it's really hard to keep up with, but we'll try to respond to them as much as we can. We read all of them. But in the beginning, when you're going your channel, respond to every single person. Create a conversation with them too. Um, you know, don't just say, if they're giving you a compliment, don't just say thank you. Ask a question about them to create more conversation um, on the channel. And also respond to feedback, respond to what people are saying. And you can also use what they're saying as new content ideas for your channel. So if someone is asking you a question on how to do something, uh, something wasn't clear in the video, then go ahead and take that question, create a video on your channel. And, um, and then once that video is up, give them the link, go back to that comment, post that link in that comment and say, hey, I created this for you and they will love you for it um, and very much appreciate it. And of course, reviewing your analytics and doing more of what's working. So 
um, we released, or I, I filmed a video on Etsy talking about the, the fees associated with selling on Etsy. Um, so if you're an e-commerce creative business, you'll, you'll, you have heard of, of Etsy. And I put that on the channel, not really, you know, um, thinking that I was going to create more videos out of it, but that video did so well. And so many people were responding to it, asking more Etsy questions. So of course, I'm going to create more content for our audience relating to that, doing more of what's working. Number five is giving clear call to actions. So you know how whenever you watch a video and someone's like, please like, comment, and subscribe, um, they're doing that not because they're just repeating what everyone else is saying, I hope, um, but they're doing that because you have to tell people what you want them to do and be clear about it. So don't just assume that they know to subscribe or to you know, like the video. You gotta tell them, be direct with them. Um, you can do this in many different ways. Say it in the video, put it in the description. Uh, this is something that we created is, um, we created a video that is made of four videos. And you're nodding because I think you've seen this before. Um, so we were kind of like dancing around to a cool song, waving these pieces of paper. And when you watch it as a whole, it says click here to subscribe. And it just, again, when someone watches that, you can get creative with this. It's a good feeling, it makes them smile, and hopefully it gets them to subscribe. Um, so that's something that you could do, tell people again directly in the video as well. And another call to action that you can give them is to continue learning from you. So let them know that you're going to be putting a related video. Um, like this is called an end screen. So that Etsy video that you see up there is a related video. And we specifically put that there because this video is Etsy tips for making more money. Um, and so we know that if you're watching this video about Etsy, you're gonna probably wanna learn about the cost of selling on Etsy. So we put that as a recommended video right there, again, telling people to watch the related video. And that adds more watch time to your channel which YouTube really loves. They love watch time. So the more that you can get um, people to stay on your channel and watch your content, you know, the more that's going to just add to that whole SEO juice on your channel. Number six is, again, focus on improving one thing at a time. So I can, I can put all of these things as numbers, work on thumbnails, upgrade gear, but the truth is, is that all of this is going to be super overwhelming if you think about all of the individual things that you need to do while starting on a channel. And it's not going to be realistic for you to try doing it all at once. So set yourself one milestone every month and say, okay, this month I'm going to focus on improving my thumbnails. Um, or this month I'm going to just get my first video up, right? Um, Thumbnails are really important, by the way, because that's what people see first when they show up in the search engine. So you wanna capture people into your world with an, an intriguing thumbnail. So that's something you can work on. Gear, you don't need crazy gear to start a YouTube channel. So it really depends what kind of channel you're starting. But if you're someone who's just thinking of, you know, talking in front of the camera, all you need is a webcam and maybe an external mic if the mic on your laptop isn't that great. And you can get one of those USB mics that you can just plug into your laptop. And again, I can send you this information if you like. We have a whole list of gear for different types of um, filming setups that you wanna do. So let me know if you're interested in that. Um, so, but don't try to like get the, the craziest, most expensive gear all at once, right? Um, just focus on what you need to do. And, um, and then, you know, for us, we knew that we wanted to, we started off just with a really, really crappy webcam um, on our laptop filming those videos. And then one little bit at a time, we we're like, okay, we need this mic because audio is crap. Um, and then we upgraded the, the webcam to an HD webcam. Again, little milestones with little steps here and there. We also wanted to share our travel adventures with other people. So that's when we decided to get a GoPro. And then, you know, so one thing at a time, where you see the need, and if you have the budget for that, you know, that's when you get it. Don't try to get all of the gear at once. 
maybe one thing you want to work on is speaking on camera. So maybe your speaking skills and getting better at speaking. Um, I started off with full scripts for my videos because um, I'm kind of crazy like that where I like to see everything on the paper. Um, but, you know, over time you don't need that anymore. Um, if you're just cool with winging it, which is what Jewel does, um, she's just a, she's a winger. Um, she just like goes at it and everything just flows really nicely. Um, now I use point form sometimes. So what really helps me is just knowing the topic of my video and just writing a few points here and there. And so every often I can, um, I'm speaking on the camera and then every so often I look down a piece of paper, pause, and then come back and talk to it. And then when you're on the editing, you can, you can chop that, those pauses out, right? And then put that all together. Uh, and then the, the big kahuna is live streaming. So if that's something that you want to focus on um, in a certain month, live streaming is really good as well for your channel because it increases the watch time that you have. So one thing at a time, guys. That's, 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 I know maybe that's not a satisfying answer, <laughs> but it, it really is. It's, it's a stack. You're stacking, you're stacking your wins, right? First video filmed and edited up on the channel. Okay, now I want to consistently make it my goal to release one video every two, every two weeks. So next, try that, right? And then keep doing that, getting better at speaking on camera, one step at a time. It doesn't have to be all of this stuff all at once. So these are all of the things that have really, you know, we've fed into our YouTube channel it's time, but it's also an investment. Like you're putting this all into your YouTube channel and that will in turn feed you back. The more you feed YouTube, the more it will feed you, literally, because you'll get money from it. Um, it will feed your business as well. It will feed into your business. And the way we've structured our channel is that we, you know, we have, we have online courses, um, we have services as well. So if we created let's say a YouTube tutorial, and we have a YouTube course, we will put a link, we'll mention it in the video, and then we'll put a link to that YouTube course in the description for people to check out. So it's all feeding in there. And think of your YouTube channel as little, every single video is its own <coughs> salesperson. So you have all these salespeople out there working for you in cyberspace, bringing people back into your world. So this is a question that we get very often. Can you actually make money on YouTube? And there's, the answer is yes. And um, there's many different ways though. Uh, the reason why there's many, the, we have uh, chosen to, to go into all of these different money making ways because we like to have multiple streams of income and not just be reliant on one or the other. So. The first way is Google ad revenue. That's what I showed you in the beginning there. That's when you make, um, you make some money on someone watching or clicking an ad that's on your video. And right now our channel makes, in, only in Google ad revenue, our channel makes about $1,800 to $2,000 a month, um, just in Google ad revenue alone. And sometimes, and that will totally fluctuate. Again, depends on what type of videos you're creating, depends on your audience, your content, all that kind of stuff. The, uh, another thing, another cool thing is, is as well as you might get a video that does really well that ends up paying you quite a bit that you didn't even expect. Um, so this is Etsy, this is an Etsy video like I mentioned earlier. This one did, this is something that I released earlier this year. And this video alone has produced um, to date over 4,000 Canadian dollars. So that's just one video. So if you have other videos that people respond really well to and your content is really good, then that's more revenue for you. Um, so that's one, one stream. Another stream is affiliate commissions, AKA joint ventures. Um, so, <laughs> so the way that works is that if you're talking about a certain product, uh, you read a book, you went to, an, uh, you, went, you took a course, a program, uh, you know, anything like that, you can grab the affiliate link for that product and put it in your description and make some money off of that by recommending it. If someone watches the video 
and you know from watching that video they really want to get that book they'll go in the description and purchase it from you to give you an example um i created a video on uh, talking about bluehost as a web web hosting company so we use bluehost and you know i was giving my honest opinion what i liked what i didn't like um, it's not like a raving review every time it's just completely honest opinion but when you put that, you know, we have the affiliate link for Bluehost in our description and we earn $100 US every time someone signs up for Bluehost from watching that video. Another example, by the way, if you know, there's tons of products on Amazon and you can grab an affiliate link or create an affiliate link for any single one of those products. So if you're talking about gear, you're talking about specific health products, whatever industry you're in, um, you can start an Amazon affiliate account, grab the link for that, and put that in the description. And what's really cool is that even if someone clicks on that link and doesn't purchase that product that you recommended, they get cookied for 30 days. So if they purchase absolutely anything on Amazon within those 30 days of clicking on your link, then you get a commission off of that. And we've seen some pretty crazy product purchases <laughs> from people, um, stuff that we haven't recommended, but they go and buy stuff on Amazon after clicking on our link. And you'll earn commissions off of that. Um, and then the other ways are just, you know, whatever products and services you provide. We have online courses, one-on-one -on -one coaching, we do design services as well. And again, whatever video we're creating that's related to that topic, we will put those links in the description. And it all, it, that's where the system that you're investing your time in, that's where it starts to pay you. Pay you. So the next slide is, um, is, this is what I wanna offer you. If you want to continue this learning journey with us um, and you know, just wanna continue learning from us, we have courses on YouTube, we have uh, stuff on video editing, and um, you know, there's even a course in there on Amazon Associates program, so how to create that account, how to start it up, how to connect it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we want to offer you two months free access to our course library, which is constantly changing. Like I said, we're going to be releasing another course later this year. So um, this is on Skillshare. And the way that it works is, that's the link, by the way, if you want to um, take part in those two months free access. This is on Skillshare. So the way it works is that you, it's a subscription base. You sign up for that. You have access not only to our courses, but to 30,000 other courses on Skillshare by other course creators. So you can take it for two months. And then if you decide it's not worth your value, you can cancel it anytime. Um, totally up to you. But that's what we'd like to offer you today. And also subscribing to our YouTube channel if you haven't done already, if you'd like to continue learning from us. And um, if you have specific questions that, um, that you'd like to get more clear on, like maybe you wanna know what, what is the next step that I should get? You, know, you wanna describe what your business is and what kind of video ideas you want out of that, what, what, um, what gear you wanna get, that kind of thing, then you can, you can hit us up for a free 30-minute strategy call um, by emailing me over there. Now, I, I see here that we, we still have some time, so I want, to, I want to open it up for asking questions and stuff, and I want to bring Jewel up here, because um, so, she'll also help with answering questions. And, um, and yeah, we can get into the nitty gritty. Like, I, I wanted this to be a discussion here, because I know everyone is at different levels with their YouTube channel with different, different stuff, uh, different challenges. So, Jewel, you want to come in? And yeah, so yeah, go right ahead. My question is, uh, you talked about Google Ads. Yes. Uh, what I wasn't hearing is how are you getting those specific people to advertise on your post? Does Google so how do those people come to you? Yeah. Okay. So oh, right. So the question was, um, so the question was, how do the specific ads show up on your videos? Are you turning them on? Are you choosing them? That kind of thing. So. Google is choosing them for you, but you can make it easier for them when you do proper SEO on your videos. So that Etsy video that Arit created, she used TubeBuddy and she SEO, she optimized that video so that when people are running ads who have courses on Etsy or they do consulting on Etsy, 
they can find her video more easily to place their ads on. And because her video is doing well, they want to place their ads on those videos. And you do need to apply to get the Google ad revenue. You need to have at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch time minutes on your channel to be approved. Because they want to, Google wants to know that you're serious about being in the game of YouTube. So they need you to have that credibility and so that people don't just start channels for doing whatever. They want to clean up a lot of stuff that's happening right now on YouTube. So once they do that and you get approved, then you turn on monetization for every video that you put on and then ads just start to show up. And if you're good at SEO, then you'll have specific ads. So when I do my Amazon videos, I have all Amazon ads that pop up because the people that are running those ads, they know that we can be found on page one. So they want to place their ads on our videos because we get views. Does that make sense? So then your ads end up being specific to you because of how you created them. Yeah, so you, uh, Google and YouTube, they want everything to be congruent. So they, when you are watching an Amazon video, they want you to see Amazon ads because then you're more likely to do something with that because you are searching for that video. So they, they are working on placing ads properly um, for each video. Okay, so the question was about uh, music on YouTube. Basically, how can you not get a strike or how can you not get banned by uh, using certain kinds of music? My question to you is, have you, the music that you're getting, where are you getting it from? Okay. So you need to make sure that you get copyright free music. And back then when we first started, it was very difficult to find copyright free music. But now there are entire channels and entire businesses dedicated to copyright free music. So there are artists who will put copyright free music because they want their song on your video. And in exchange, they'll create the song for free, give it to you for free, but you put their YouTube a link or whatever their Spotify in the description and that's the exchange and there's so much good quality free music right now and also YouTube has their own free catalog in their dashboard for you to use music you can type in your genre if you want cinematic happy dancing angry whatever and you can choose the time stamp as well you can put those in your videos and you won't get copyright strikes there's also um, there's also a place in YouTube where you can check the the policies for the song that you're using. So sometimes when I do, I have a music channel and I'll do covers sometimes of songs. So I first wanna check to see if that song, if I can even use it. And it will tell you, it will tell you whether, you know, you can't use it at all. It'll tell you whether you can use it, but then you won't, you won't be able to monetize that video or it will tell you if you can do like a share, uh, ad revenue share on that video as well. So definitely, though, um, pay attention to using copyright-free music and also use that tool to find out whether you can use that. Yeah. Yes? Earlier in your presentation, you were talking about uh, batch recording and poor recording in the days when I started editing and then they popped up. Yes. Does YouTube have a native scheduler or put them all up on one day and they're not all going to go live on that? No, nope. yeah, so they. So the question was um, in terms of batching, um, but specifically about whether YouTube has a native scheduler tool. And the answer is yes, yeah. So when you, when you um, let's say you filmed all four of those videos, you can go into YouTube and then upload them and schedule them for a specific date and time. And YouTube will keep that video as hidden like you, they won't see it at all on your channel until that time comes and it will be released into the public space. Oh, I see that. Yeah. 
Uh, so we just recently went on a business trip to uh, Berlin uh, for the Udemy Live conference, which is a course creating platform, and we were gone for three weeks. So before we left, we filmed everything, edited and uploaded and scheduled everything. And while we were on our trip, like because we barely went on our laptop on our trip, everything went out as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So you can schedule everything and have yourself covered when you when you're on vacation or need time off. Yeah. So you mentioned about Amazon makes for now just for 30 days, not for 24 hours. So what if I'm watching your video and I click on the Amazon link and then I would like someone else's YouTube video and then I click on their Amazon link or something, how does that work? Does it, does it knock yours out? So the question was about Amazon affiliate links. And if you click on a certain link and then you click on another link, which one is the one that's going to be used? And it's the one that is the, the, the later one, the, the second one. one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And it's really cool because a lot of people don't utilize this. People buy on, like Amazon is so trusted. People buy on Amazon all the time. I'll be talking about a camera or a microphone and people will buy chips, food, clothing, weird stuff that you can't really even say on camera. And, <laughs> and you, get com you get commissions yeah. for it. So it's, it's really cool. And it's a, a lot of people need to utilize that. It's, I mean, you're going to create the video anyways. Why not put your affiliate links in them? Yeah. What is your... Uh, sweet spot for minutes on your videos. Like, what's a good time for attention span for your clients? You know, different markets, different time. Yes. So the question was, what is the sweet spot in terms of how long your video should be? And yes, it will be totally different in terms of your market and attention spans, all that kind of thing. In the beginning, YouTube preferred short and sweet for like the audience preferred short and sweet videos. But now what's really getting rewarded are longer videos. Um, people really, it's almost like people are creating like um, short films and stuff and episodic videos and stuff. That doesn't say that you have to do that, but it basically means that however long it takes you to give the value that you want to give in that video, take that time. Don't be... Um, don't be forced to think that, you know, you have to keep it under three minutes or something like that. That might be for like a promo video, um, but for YouTube, you can, you can take longer to film that video. The video that you saw with the Etsy, uh, the one that earned $4,000, that was about a 20 something minute video. It was a very dry subject of her just going into paint, explaining the, the fee process on Etsy. Like she's literally just making it easier for people to understand and people love that video so it doesn't need to be complicated and if you are providing value people will watch and people now like everything is documentary style film style so people are on youtube for hours and hours at a time so as long as you're teaching what you need to teach and you're not um bullshitting <laughs> on on camera then people will watch you and they'll be attracted to your personality um, my understanding is that you have separate uh, categories for your videos. That you, you, you make a batch for this category and a batch for that category. And yeah. So the question is, um, in terms of themes, how do you how do you work with batching your content and and working with those themes on your channel? So for us, we have we have like I said four four to five times we release content on our channel. Mondays is Make That Money Mondays. Tuesdays is Social Media Biz Tips Tuesdays. Wednesdays is about video creation. So Jewel will talk a lot about video editing. Um, and Thursdays is more of a personal side. That's where we release our blog adventures, tell personal stories, that kind of thing. So when we film, um, because there's two of us, we each kind of have different topics that we like to talk about. I'm not into video editing at all. <laughs> I don't edit my own videos. She's the pro video editor. So she'll take that day on mostly. So she has, you know, she'll take on um, Wednesdays and Mondays and she'll um, sometimes other days too, actually. And she'll just, she won't say, okay, I'm going to just film like four video editing tutorials 
on this day, but she'll look at the week as a whole and say, I need to film two videos for this week and two videos for the following week. So I can do four for today. Um, and it's up to you as well how many videos you can film in a day. You know, you can't, like for me, I can't go past four. <laughs> I'll, I'll feel really drained. Um, and I want to give that energy to the camera. So four is good for me. And I film my four and then we release that for the next two weeks. And the next week I will for, uh, film four videos again for the following week. And it's just going to, it'll set you up with all of the content for the weeks to come. Does that answer your question? Yes. Correct. Yeah, correct. They're all themes that are related to making money online and growing your business for creative entrepreneurs. So on content creation, making money, all that kind of stuff, social media, it's all under that umbrella. Another thing when I'm filming is, so I usually take the days Monday and Wednesday. So when I'm filming, I won't film a Monday and a Monday. I'll film a Monday, then a Wednesday, a Monday, then a Wednesday, so that I make sure that I've locked in that week. Because, you know, oftentimes you might be filming, like, it's it's very draining to film. And you if you don't get through all your videos, then you've messed up your week. So make sure that when you're doing that, have a system where it's like Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, so that you've got your videos for the week. Yep, I agree. Have you ever come across a time when uh, you have run out of ideas and you can see that because you see you, you have a commitment that you have to have so many videos for the day. Yes. One of the places your ideas come from is question. Yes. But have you ever come across a time when you have a black belt? Yeah, so the question is how do you come up with so many ideas for videos and do you ever run out? Um, for me, those moments actually do happen. Um, there's just, so I, I have learned to keep, um, and have, have you guys heard of Evernote? Yes. So I have, I love Evernote. It's like my digital brain. And I have, you, uh, I have learned that anytime an idea for a video pops up to put it on there, because when the time comes, you will make use of it. Um, because I found previously, like when it would come time to me filming, I, you know, I would spend so much time trying to think of a certain topic or, or idea, um, which would take up my filming time. So sometimes I even have the previous day beforehand where I batch those ideas, the batching of the idea production to say, okay, I know tomorrow I'm going to be filming videos on all of these things. And how I come up with those ideas, it's, yeah, it's questions, it's looking at, um, it's also using that TubeBuddy keyword tool to see, because from that you can see what other people are searching for in your area or in your industry. Um, you can see all of the related searches. So if someone's um, searching something that you know you can create a video on it, then that's a great way to, great place to get more ideas. Let me know. For me with ideas, just to touch upon that, uh, I usually tell our new clients when we're working with them, starting a new YouTube channel, is to do a mind map and write down every little thing about it. Everything, break it down. Don't just say like, if you're doing a gardening channel, don't just write down gardening. Okay, what's what, what kind of soil? And go through each, each video can be about a different type of soil, you know? Break it down. You don't, people often think that you need to put everything in one video. You don't. If you watch our tutorials, and we have very specific things that are happening in the video, and it's only that one thing. We, I have over maybe 120 Camtasia videos because I'm going through every little thing on Camtasia. I could create one video talking about all the, those things, but then I would run out of ideas. So that's why I break it down. Break it down, simplify it, and just get straight to the point. People really enjoy that. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. So the question is, if I um, create a channel on something that's not very commercial, like meditation, um, will I still receive the Google ad revenue? And yes, absolutely. Um, there's a ton of channels out there on meditation and mindset stuff and all that kind of thing, which people are earning ad revenue on. I think um, when you, and you can kind of maybe chime in on this, is like maybe when you're using profanity or when the stuff gets into like nudity and that kind of thing um, is when the ad revenue, right? I don't know if, um, if that's where you might not be able to monetize your channel. Basically, whatever topic that isn't nudity or profanity or anything yeah. like that, you can earn ad revenue because there are general ads that play on every single video. There are those huge companies, Walmart, things like that, that will just spray their ads everywhere and it will go on every kind of video. And meditation is very popular on YouTube. People love guided meditations. They have great watch time. People are always listening. And also, if the ad revenue, you know, that's that's something that you can do. But also, there's many products on Amazon, you know, like many uh, things that you could recommend, oils, audios, lights, whatever. There's many ways other than Google ad revenue to earn income on your YouTube channel. Yes. How, um, how can I work this with you? How can I get my hand held into the YouTube world? Uh, so the question is, how can can someone work with us and be handheld to get better in the in uh, in growing your channel? And that's um, actually through our one-on-one -on -one coaching. So we do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentorship where we'll work with you specifically on your specific, like wherever you are, we'll create a customized plan. And um, whether that's, you know, to get your first video up or to grow your subscribers and views, whatever that is will work with you directly on that. Um, and you can get in touch with us with the email that's on the screen right there. And just to, to add to that, those channels, those examples that you saw, those were channels that had never had a channel before. Yeah. They signed up for one, didn't have any videos. And the, that second, the first channel, the product reviews, at one point, they, they were beating us and they had more subscribers than us at one point. And they had a viral video um, that went to 3 million views. So it's pretty crazy what can happen. Everyone's results are different. Yeah. So the question is, what do you do with negative comments? Um, and you will get them. They definitely will pop up. Some people will love your stuff and some people will hate it. Uh, it's really up to you. You can, you know, you can either delete it. Um, sometimes if they're very, very negative and we have done that, we will delete the, the comment because we don't want it to create more conversation with having other people chime in and all that kind of thing. We don't want that negative energy to spread. So we just cut it. Um, if it's something that someone just, you know, didn't like something in the video and, you know, you know, it just wasn't to their liking, then we'll just leave it. It really depends. You're the one who goes through the comments more. So. Yeah, I'll give you an example. So Arit did a video about how to stabilize a camera and she was stabilizing it with a manual stabilizer. So Arit's a female and she's talking about camera stuff. So a lot of male comments were coming in saying she doesn't know what she's talking about, this and that. And there was this whole discussion about if Arit was doing it correctly. And there was like a battle going on in the comments of people trying to defend her or discredit her because she was, I don't know, not holding it or she said the word thing in the video and she didn't use a correct yeah, camera term. So people will criticize you for anything. It just comes with the territory and you just have to accept it. So um, if something's really hateful and disgusting, then yes, we will delete it. But yeah. for the most part, we will comment and say, okay, our stuff's not for you. Please move on. You know, that kind of thing. Any other further questions? Well, one more, one more question. Uh, 
how we will take the sample as a subset with a so we have a, the, the question was, um, if you have different topics, do you create a different channel? It depends. We have a different approach to this than the regular YouTube gurus. They will tell you to create a channel on one topic and stay with that. But for us, we actually don't recommend that for your sanity and mental health. Be <laughs> for real, like, because if you do that, people get, um, let's say they create a certain video game on that channel and they only talk about that video game. Do you think that they're gonna be talking about that video game for the next five years, 10 years? They're gonna get people, we go through phases. You don't always talk about the same thing. Am I talking, I'm talking about Amazon right now, but am I gonna be into it 10 years from now? No, so we decided to create a channel on us as a brand, us as people, and we evolve and people have seen that on our channel. So we made that very clear upfront in our channel. We could have more subscribers if we, if I only did an Amazon channel, I could probably have a hundred thousand subscribers, but would I be happy right now? I'm not doing Amazon very much anymore. So it all depends on, uh, we value our mental health. So uh, it, it's, it's dependent on how much you love that topic and if it's gonna be with you forever. For Reet Music, yeah, she can talk about music forever. That's her. So that's something you need to dive deeper and ask yourself. Okay. <laughs> yes. The languages, um, there are, it, the question is, uh, if you have two languages, should you create two different channels, one channel? So there are YouTubers who do both. So they'll switch. So they'll talk about, they'll do one video in one language and they'll have English translation. And then they'll do it in um, English and then they'll have translation in their language. So they interchange it. It's all dependent on how you start your channel. If you start it like that and your audience is used to that, then they'll be cool with it. But if all of a sudden you speak your language and then all of a sudden you change it to English, then they're not gonna like that. So you can start two channels, but in my opinion, it's very hard to start two channels, two successful channels. Um, I would recommend doing one and interchange them. Or, or on that day, you only talk about in that language and on that day, you only talk on in that language. Right. Thank you very much for uh, Roger. I'll invite you back on here and thank you guys so much for listening. Great. Great. Press the button. Thank you so much. Uh, that was just a mind boggling amount of understandable information. Good. I'm glad. Very well done. And uh, Ion Connect, thank you very much for making.